Well, hey, YouTube, welcome back, my friends, once again to Photoshop Elements TV. I'm your host, Jack, and today we're going to be talking about Camera Raw. All right. The first thing I want to clarify is what is Camera Raw? So on your cameras, they're in the menu setting. There is a way to change the picture quality. Most cameras are set or defaulted to JPEG. JPEG simply means when you take a picture, the camera does a really good job at compressing all the information down and, and you know, keeping all the vibrant colors. But you can set your camera to camera raw. So what camera raw is, it captures everything. And when you pull it in the editor, it allows you to make those adjustments to the photo without actually, you know, I guess destroying the picture, right? And, but it doesn't allow the camera to do it, which cameras, modern day cameras are very good at what they do. And they're very, very good at capturing the image the way you see it. But if you want to use camera raw, I would suggest using camera raw if you shoot any events or if you get paid for your photography, you should be shooting camera raw. All right, so I have this picture brought up in the camera raw. Right now, this is camera raw 15.5. All versions work pretty much the same way. What it allows you to do is a lot of different fine tuning before you ever get the picture into your actual editor. Here's what we're gonna look at. The first thing at the very top here, I'm gonna try to blow this up for you so we can walk through these, is the profile. You can see the Adobe color profiles. Now Adobe has a lot of different things in here. They have things like, um, uh, Adobe Landscape, and I would suggest you try each one of these as you go along. Adobe Landscape, and you can see the gradual changing of the pictures. If you cannot see the changing of the pictures, you could always change it to a side-by-side -side view, all right? And we could actually change the overall size of the picture, but I'm going to leave it exactly where it's set at. The next thing we're going to look at is Adobe Portrait. And don't ever think, hey, this is the landscape. I can't use Portrait. It's a subtle change to the photo. and You might like what you see. Adobe Standard and Adobe Vivid. I do like that vivid look. I think the, the, the blue in the water is popping out. The sky is kind of popping, and I do like that. The next thing we're going to look at here, well, there's also at the top, there's an auto button. Again, you're letting Adobe do kind of what the camera is going to do. And if you hover over that, there is a helper text. It'll show you kind of what's going on. And there is a black and white. Okay, where if you click at, you can actually change the photo into a black and white picture. But we're going to do these by hand. Now, the white balance. The white balance, again, is a way that we can change the overall look of the picture. And when I teach editing, I want to show people that the white balance can be many different things. You can use auto, which is what the camera is usually set to, unless you do a custom white balance. And we'll talk about that in another video. Daylight. We can go to daylight. You can see we're kind of brightened it up there. We can go to cloudy. We can go to shade. Tungsten lighting. Now look how blue that made that. It made it real. We call that a cool temperature. When the photo turns more blue, it's cool. When it turns more yellowish, it's it's hot. Okay, the temperature is hot. Fluorescent. Yeah, that doesn't look quite right either. Flash. And again, you're just simulating this, right? We didn't take this with the flash. Obviously, you can't take a landscape with a flash. Or you could do a custom white balance. But we are going to go back up to cloudy, I think. No, I didn't like that. Let's see. Uh, shade. No. Tungsten. Too blue. All right. We're going to go back up to as shot. All right. We're going to leave that one as shot. Okay, the next thing we're talking about here is the temperature, which I just discussed with you. If the temperature goes to the left, it's a cooler temperature. Now, we're talking about the temperature of light. So if you go to the left, you can see where it's getting cooler. And if you go all the way to the right, you can see where it'll get very, very much of a yellow tint. Because heat produces yellow, where cooling effects produce blue. Okay. So we're going to bring this down a little bit, maybe just to make a little bit more blue there, the water. I kind of look at the, the overall scene there, but uh, there we go. Now, tinting the picture. Tint works a little bit different, and you can see when I hover over these again, it does give you a lot of help, okay? So you can learn a lot as you're going along here. If I go over tint, it's going to show you what the tint does. 
So as we tint, we can go to the green side here. This is nice if you're shooting uh, you know, out in the woods or something or tree lines. Or you can go over this way and you can make it even like purple. Okay. If you double click it, it'll go back to its standard setting, which is a plus 10. We're going to leave it there. Now your overall exposure, obviously you can underexpose. And you can watch, watch the graphs at the top here. You see this, the graph up here at the top. So if we take this thing, okay, and we move the exposure across, to get the perfect exposure, we almost want all those lines centered up there. Because if you go too far this way, you can see it's way overexposed. I'm going to double click it and it takes it back to zero. Making a photo contrast, either more contrasty or less contrast. Contrast kind of gives the photo more detail. So we're going to give it like a plus six. One thing to stress when you're editing your photos, this is very much a process for you. You have to go by your likes. There's no ability, there's no way I can say everything should be set at this. You have to work these sliders and see what you like better or worse. Kind of like an eye test, right? Is this better or is this worse? All right. Go to highlights. We can remove the highlights or we can add more highlights. So highlights is anything that's more white. It's going to bring out even whiter. I'm going to double click that one. Take it back to zero. Shadows. Now anything in the shadows. So if you're looking here over on the waterline where my mouse is around this little piece of uh, uh, land coming out here into the water. That's a shadowy area. So I could bring those shadows up. You can see there now there's rocks. When this was down to zero, we can't see really any rocks in here. Watch when I bring the shadows up. I'm going to give the picture more detail. There you go. So I brought some more detail into the photograph. All right. Whites. Anything obviously that are white like the clouds. We can bring those, make those more whiter. Look at that. We can blow the sky out. Or we can bring them down a little bit and make them a little bit darker giving that cloud the resemblance right there of a uh, sea turtle. Looks pretty neat. The blacks. Anything that is a black, we could either bring the blacks up or, again, we could take the blacks down, right? We're going to bring them up because we don't want to lose the detail of those rocks over here on this piece of land that we just brought into uh, the picture. These ones here will make your photograph more clear, all right? So if I go over clarity, it's going to tell you what that what that is. Okay. It changes the contrast around the edges of objects in your photos. All right, we're going to go here. And we're going to change the contrast around the edges of objects. Okay. So we're going to give that a plus 30. That looks pretty good. Vibrance. Let's look at vibrance here. So the vibrance changes the saturation without causing unpleasant color, uh, color casts. All right. So let's go ahead and we're going to work on that. We're going to pull this up. You can see everything becomes way too blue, right? Take us back some. And I'm going to leave it at a plus four. Saturation. Again, if I hover the mouse over the word, it's going to say controls the saturation of the colors quality. The quality of the colors. We can bring those blues out. And that almost looks unnatural. Or we can take it out. Again, you desaturate the picture. In essence, is a black and white. Okay, bring it back up. All right, right there. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about is details. So here's some details. Sharpening. We can sharpen the photo. Move uh, right to sharpen details. So if we move more to the right, we're going to sharpen out details. Sometimes you can get the details too sharp, and then they don't look natural. I'm going to double-click and leave that where it was at 40. Noise reduction. Most modern-day cameras no longer get noise reduction. What the way noise reduction happens on a photograph is if we're shooting at a very high ISO, let's say in modern cameras, I've seen them do you know, 3,600 ISO. Uh, say you get up around 1,200 ISO, uh, it's a low light situation. You're trying to put more light into the picture. You may actually create basic noise. Now, I don't think of this as audio noise, like something you would hear. This is actually like noise in the picture where the picture will start looking grainy. And you're going to take some of that grain out just by simply reducing the noise. I don't have to do it here. We don't have that problem. All right. And then there's color noise reduction. Okay. Again, color noise reduction, as you can see from the picture, it will look grainy. So we don't really need the color reduction either. 
The last thing we have here is the collaboration. The collaboration process, you can see where it's version six, you got all different versions here. This is mainly for the reason of, if I'm saving this photo, uh, if I'm doing a, a wedding or an event, and I have another editor, somebody else is doing some editing for me. Maybe, maybe they have version five, uh, you know, or something of that in nature. Um, but you know, you should have all your team on the same version. So version six will do it. All right. So with that said, there's also some other stuff That's the adjustments. We can also click up here on the right. We can do some cropping right here without even going into the editor yet. And you know, they still put this in here. And I think this is interesting. Uh, the red eye reduction. Modern day cameras, it's very hard to get red eye in somebody's eye unless you shoot a flash directly in their face and it's dark out. It's really, really hard. You have to almost try to get red eye. And this last thing is reset to open, reset to default, and apply previous settings. We're just going to go back to the top here. Once you're done, if you hit done, it's going to close that photo out with those settings. If you hit open, it's going to open it in the full editor. So folks, I hope this helped you out a little bit and took out a little bit of the scariness uh, with, with the uh, uh, raw image editor. So until next time, remember, you know, keep those shutters clicking, keep the editors editing, and I'll see you back in the next video on Photoshop Elements TV. If you enjoyed this video, click the subscribe button and give it a big thumbs up. Thanks for watching.